Yo, welcome back guys. So today we're going to be using object oriented programming styles and practices to actually complete an application. So if you've been watching the videos and the tutorials, you should be able to follow along um, pretty nicely. So in this project, we're just going to create like a basic ATM machine. Um, so you can kind of check your balance, uh, deposit, withdraw, um, and we're going to be doing it object oriented. So we're not just going to make one big main class. So we're actually going to have an object of a user which obviously you can expand on this project and you can uh, customize it in your own way. So let's just get right into it. So since we are using an OOP style um, <clears throat> programming and not just kind of hard coding and um, kind of making it sloppy, we're actually gonna start off by creating an object. So let's start off by calling it a user and something this user, uh, people are gonna need to access. Uh, it's pretty much everything for now, obviously, Maybe everything shouldn't be public, but for this tutorial, let's just make it public. So some things a user might have. Let's just start off with uh, maybe a string for a name, an integer for a balance, and then maybe an integer for selection. <clears throat> so for the selection, um, kind of like what they're doing in the program. So, you know, if they want to check their balance, we're just going to be keeping track of what's what current selection they're on, um, as well as a name. So when we create a new user, we're going to want to construct it, right? So let's do user and let's create a constructor. So this is the default constructor because it's not taking any parameters. And this is if you just create a new person. So I've I already have a video on constructors. So, you know, go watch back the tutorials. So this is a really basic example. So let's just set name. Let's just say um, unknown. So they don't really have a name, right? <clears throat> so let's just make that unknown. And then maybe their balance, they're new. So it's probably zero because, you know, we haven't really defined what it's going to be. So what if we want to create a custom user? Uh, we'll create another constructor. But this one, <clears throat> excuse me, this one's going to actually take some things in. So let's do string, new name. Let's create a new name for that user. Let's also allow them to make a balance. So if, uh, let's just say they're, oh wait, we actually want this to say a new balance because we don't want to <clears throat> overwrite this. So then as we're constructing a new user, we're going to have to set this objects uh, values up. So name of this class, it's probably going to be the new name. And then balance of this class will be the new balance that we set up. So now we kind of have a user set up. So now in our main, when the, when we start the application, let's do user and then we'll just say new user. And let's just set it up as the default constructor because we're not actually, you know, passing anything in. Or actually, no, let's, let's create a new user so we can see this work. Let's just call him Alexander, Alexander P. And maybe give it $1,000. So now we have a new user who has $1,000 because that's what our constructor is. Um, we're not using a default constructor. We didn't make a new... Um, you know, an empty object, we, we have stuff. So now let's actually design some functions for our ATM, right? So some of the things, let's just have um, a void function called print menu. So this is just gonna print out our menu. So the things that we wanna show up in our ATM, so we can just see out, um, let's just do some hashtags. And then let's actually, um, put menu like this, and then let's concatenate and, you know, kind of add on. We're not actually concatenating, but we're, we're adding another string. Let's put in the name of the user. And then let's end the line. And then let's copy this. Let's just be lazy. And we don't want menu. We want something like an option. So let's start off with check your balance. And we don't need name here anymore. So we can check our balance as one. We'll get to the selection soon. And then two, three, and four. So what if you want to withdraw? Actually, let's start with deposit. Deposit, withdraw, and exit. And then maybe we could see out the menu. So that, you know, it just kind of looks pretty. So now this user has this function to print the menu. So 
Now we're, we're going to want to have a selection, right? So let's just do something like this. Do, let's create a do while loop. And what we actually want to do, so while selection, oh no, while new user. So whatever our username is, or whatever our user was, dot selection does not equal four. So basically, <clears throat> we're going to want to print new user. So we are using object oriented program. So we're actually going to have to access its thing. It's, uh, you know, it's functions, it's everything that it has. So um, we're going to print the menu pretty much every single time. So we're kind of going through like a, a game loop here. And then while the selection they choose is not four because four is our exit. So we just kind of pick that. So right now it, it won't do anything. It should just print out, you know, it should just print the menu, which it's going to keep doing, but we don't, you know, don't necessarily want to do that. So um, now let's actually create a couple functions. So first of all, after we do this, we're going to want to maybe see out, um, uh, we'll just see in for now. Let's take in a selection. So now we're actually getting our selection after we print the menu. So now it won't loop through and go crazy. So Alexander P. So this is our new, um, our new one. So we actually don't want any of this either. This looks bad. Okay. So now we have our selection and we print the menu. So now we actually want to do something. So let's create these functions we have. So we need a balance deposit and a withdrawal function. We already handled exiting, which would be four. So I think if we just press four, it closes. So that just closes the application. So let's do avoid balance. So now we're gonna make a balance. So basically what we want to do is um, show the balance. So see out and then let's just say, um, balance and then maybe it show a dollar sign and then let's add on to our balance and end the line so now we should be able to check our balance which we set up to be a think a thousand dollars um <clears throat> so actually we need to change the selection so it shouldn't do anything so we actually want a, uh, a switch statement in here, which we'll, we'll get to that later. So let's, let's first kind of build our functions. So now let's do deposit. So now when we deposit, we want to, um, we want to make a integer depot. And then we're going to want to see, see out something like amount to deposit deposit and then maybe a dollar sign and we don't want to end the line because we want it to you know add out or actually look good so then let's actually see in our depot and then after we get the user's input balance is going to plus equal depot so now when we call this function we are going to just kind of save it as a depot ask them how much they want to deposit. And then we're going to take in that deposit and then we're going to update their balance. So now let's also create a withdraw, withdraw, withdraw function. And as you'll see that we're actually building this inside of a class so we can create many users deposit withdrawal from many users. Obviously for this program, we're not really going to be saving to like a file or anything. That's pretty unsecure. But you know, if you're just trying to make some test applications, you could also read and write from a file. Um, but that way you can actually just save the user and you're not gonna have you know, hundreds of lines. You're just gonna have a user. You can save, you can have a folder that just prints out a user and then you can search through those. But that's why object-oriented programming is a lot smarter because a lot of people build um, in these languages that are object-oriented program, but then they don't actually do that. So I thought we'd make it, you know, you know, functional and objects. So when we withdraw, we're going to want to have an integer called amount, right? Because we're going to want to take in that amount and then we're going to see in, oh no, see out, enter, um, let's just say amount to withdraw and then a dollar sign. And then let's see in the amount. 
So now we're actually taking in that. So now, but we actually want to check to see if their balance is greater than or equal to the amount that they're trying to withdraw. Then balance minus equals the amount. Otherwise, see yeah, out. You do not have enough money. So basically, so basically, you know, we're going to ask them how much they want to withdraw. We're going to take in that amount and then we're going to check their balance. So if, if they have enough or it's equal to the amount that they're trying to withdraw, then obviously what's let, let's let them withdraw it. Otherwise, you know, they don't have enough money. Something's wrong. So now we have these basic functions. So now we need to actually implement them into our um, actual, you know, menu. So let's just do a switch statement, which I did talk about switches before. So you should be somewhat familiar. Um, so we actually want to do the selection. So we're going to have a switch statement and the selection is what they're going to be initially um, entering. So now we can have case. So one, this is going to be to check the balance. So let's do break. So whoops. So now what do we actually want to do when they check their balance? So we actually we want to run our balance our balance function, which we've already designed, which is C out, uh, basically just tells you their balance and then it's gonna break. So perfect. So case two, which we want something like this. Um, <clears throat> so now case two is to deposit. So we just wanna call the deposit function. Deposit. So it's deposit and let's break. Okay, I didn't mean to make this capital. Okay, so we have already handled the functionality inside these functions. So let's do case three, which case three is to withdraw. So with draw, and then we want to break the statement. And then case four, actually, we don't need uh, another case because if it's anything but, um, if it's anything but four, then it should break the statement. So now let's actually try this. Let's see if this actually works. So let's run it. So what did we do in the beginning? We created a new user. Um, and then we have some sort of game loop, which is to print this menu and then take in some user input. So let's check the balance. So here's a thousand bucks. We check the balance. What if we want to deposit? Let's deposit another thousand and then maybe check the balance. Wow, we have two grand. So what if we want to withdraw five grand? You do not have enough money. And if we check our balance, we still have 2000. So let's withdraw one more time, 2000 and check the balance and we have nothing. So if we press four, we should exit and very simple application. If there's one thing you want to do, um, and after every time you print the menu, you may want to <clears throat> do something called system clear screen. So basically just clear the screen every time, make it really clean. Uh, it'll look really nice. So let's just see this. So Alexander P's logged in with our balance. It's a thousand bucks. So you can make this look pretty, you know, whatever you want to do. Let's check the what's deposit, uh, 140. And then let's check our balance. Now we have 1,140 and maybe exit the program. So really quickly, we, you know, designed a really fast application and <clears throat> instead of hard coding it, we did create a class called the user. We can have many users and, you know, we really, you know, forced ourselves to make an object with all these things on it because, you know, our main application should not be able to deposit, um, a user should be able to deposit, you know, we shouldn't be able to deposit into, you know, just, the ATM because you know you're not logged in, you're not authenticated. So that's really a function of something a user should have. So you know just these small things to try and get you, um, you know, practicing and making sure you do actually create classes for this kind of a thing. Um, yes, you could have done all of this inside the main function, but now look at our main function. We literally are just doing some sort of game loop, which we can also just incorporate this into um, our print menu script. But, you know, thanks for watching. I think this is, you know, a nice little thing to, you know, kind of get you started with C++ and really just letting you dive in and actually, 
you know, create a cool application. Um, and just a little test, we can actually just, let's just change the user and give ourselves a lot of money. Let's just see, just to prove that it's, you know, continuing to update. You can see that my name is Jordan and I have a lot of money. So, you know, thanks for watching guys. Uh, make sure to subscribe if you even stayed this long in the video. Um, I am going to be continuing to make more projects like this so that you can, uh, you know, have something to do because a lot of new programmers have no idea what kind of projects to make. So just leave a comment below if there's something you're lost on or if you have any other ideas because I think the next video is going to be another project. Um, so I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you next time. Thank you. Bye-bye.